Council. Once again, call to order the Tuesday, March 1st, 2022 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, we're meeting by Zoom. Uh, I would ask uh, Joe Hammer if he could take attendance, please. Yes. Rich Roberts. Here. Ryan Allard. Here. Joe Hammer here. Jim Hughes. George no. Oikel. Whoop. No, Jim. Uh, Jim is here. Oh, Jim is here. Okay, George Oikel. No, Jim is not here. I thought he was, okay, sorry. All right, no Jim, no George. Uh, Tom Dean. There. George is here. Tony Homicki. No. Dave Edwards. Here. Vieira. Here. Dave Drake, I saw is here. Peter Lambruni, I think I saw was here. It's here. Paul Paul Thompson. Here. All right, thank you. All right, so we have seven regular members and three alternates. Um, we'll meet people based on uh, whose turn it is when we get to the get to the different items. Um, just for orientation purposes, we have two. Um, applications or matters before us that are not public hearing matters. Uh, we'll hear those and then we will have uh, the public hearing on application 2122Z. Uh, when we do the public hearing, we're going to hear first from the applicant. Uh, then we'll have back and forth between the applicant and members of the commission. Once that is concluded, uh, we will open it up to members of the public who may have comments, questions, uh, issues that they want to discuss. Uh, once we've heard from the members of the public, we will turn it back over to the applicant to respond to those comments. Uh, there may be follow-up questions from members of the commission. There may be uh, additional discussion. Um, if at that point we feel we have enough information to uh, evaluate the application. We'll close the public hearing, uh, deliberate, and potentially vote. If there are uh, significant outstanding unanswered questions or issues that need to be addressed or, um, you know, it just gets too late, uh, we may continue the hearing to, uh, to the next meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is uh, the annual 824 review of the five-year capital improvement program. And I guess we're going to call on Derek Greger and uh, Bob Turgeon to make that presentation. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, as stated, we're here tonight uh, to present the capital project recommendations from the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee, known as the CIAC. Um, I'm joined by Robert Turgeon, who's the chairman of the committee, um, which is comprised of five town residents. Um, as many of you know, each year they review the CIP project requests from department heads and provide recommendations um, that are often broken down by different categories. Um, in previous years, the committee has been um, tasked with reviewing all the capital requests and then recommending funding allocations up to a $900,000 threshold. So this year is a little different. Um, in addition to our standard $900,000 in, in capital funds, local capital funds, the town's also going to be receiving um, just over $7 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds, known as ARPA, for both capital and non-capital projects. So what we did this year, what the group did this year is um, they were asked with prioritizing all of the projects that were uh, recommended by, by staff and the town manager and not really look, worrying too much about how they were going to be funded because that was going to be a decision at a later date by town council whether it was going to be local capital funds or if it was going to be um, using the federal funds coming into the town. So I think with your packets um, you had gotten in attachment A um, a list of project categories that are our typical categories. Um, I had forgotten at the time I submitted, and hopefully you got it today, we had sent out um, a second list that shows all the projects rated in priority order. Um, there were a total of 49. 
Um, that list is not broken out by category, but just gives you a rundown from top to bottom on what the group, um, the committee was recommending both to you and going forward to town council. That one has a couple of columns at the end showing um, the project values. And then the last column shows the um, total cost of that project plus all the projects that are above it as you go down the list from one to 49. Um, usually what I do is we provide a brief description of each project. Normally we have around 18 to 20. Um, of course, this year we, we have many more because they did all the projects. We have 49. So, you know, I'll leave it up to you. I'm happy to go through and just provide a brief, brief description of each one if you would like um, and run through the list. Um, I don't know that we need to go through every one of them. I mean, a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. I, I think it might be good if you um, could highlight the ones that are either different from ones that were on last year's list or ones where there's, um, you know, a substantial change in either scope or amount because we're, you know, you, you've done a good job of of including, you know, ongoing projects that require the accumulation of funds, as well as ones that can be done, you know, in a in a particular fiscal year. So if if there are ones on here that you think are are new or noteworthy, as opposed to, you know, the the roof on the portable that we talked about last year that, you know, that got put onto here just so that, uh, you know, that there's if there's anything that you think is different or important for us to be aware of, that would probably be better than just going down through the whole list. Okay, so uh, what, what I'll do is I'll go down through the prioritized list, the ones ranked one to 49 and, and, and do as you're asking. Um, there were a lot of new projects this year because of the fact that we knew um, after we had started the process, we um, you know were made aware that we're gonna be getting these additional funds that can be spent um, initially, they were constrained based on the type of project, whether they were related to the pandemic or not. Um, those rules have been loosened up. Um, so let me go through the list, starting at the top uh, with what with ones I think you may not have heard about before. Um, number two, Golf Brook Dams. That's just uh, something that DEP has instructed us uh, to do. It's it's a small project. We're just going to do a, a hazard class assessments for all the dams in the Golf Brook watershed. Um, so that $25,000 request was for that. Um, you noted the Charles Wright portable unit roof. They, they haven't completed the renovation yet, but they did want the additional funding to do the roof at the same time so it could all be completed at once, which is why there is a separate request this year. Um, sidewalk ramps you've seen many times, the roof routine replacement. Um, number six, replacing roof c &E at Highcrest School. There had been some funding applied to this project. Um, this $315,000 request will give them the balance of the funds needed um, to finish the remaining roofs at the school. So that should um, complete the entire project. Uh, number seven, uh, community center HVAC system. I don't know if that's been on the list you've seen. Uh, we've had a lot of issues with the system there, uh, malfunctions often um, that disrupts, you know, functions that they have going on at the community center. So this is for replacement of that system and also replacing the sprinkler system um, in the ceiling in, the, in that area of the building. Uh, number eight is new, that's uh, police department. The existing generator they have is over 20 years old. Uh, physical services staff uh, maintains it. They recently found that the fuel, fuel lines are leaking. They have uh, multiple components that are deteriorating pretty significantly in this. You know, being at the police department obviously is critical to emergency services and um, you know, public safety. So it's a, this $350,000 is for um, complete design and replacement of the existing generator. Let's see, nine you've seen, 10 you've seen. Um, number 11 is, a, is just a project. We, we're required, required by the Federal Highway Administration to have a management system for all of our traffic signs. Um, which we have an informal system in place now, but this is really to have someone hire a consultant come through and get a snapshot of all of our signs in town. We think there's about 3,500 of them. Um, so we could just better manage um, the capital plans for replacing them as needed, making sure they have the proper retro reflectivity, proper sizing and all of that. Um, 
Number 12, for replacement of copper, copper mill road culver, um, that's a new one. We had some culver or bridge inspections done a couple of years ago. Um, this was very high on the list for this particular one. It was originally identified you know, a while back, many years ago. So we are looking to seek funding um, through the state local bridge program, which is a 50-50 split between the state and the town. In order to apply, we need to have at least a preliminary design done. Um, so this $25,000 $25, request is to retain a consultant to at least get us to that level so we can apply for funding. Millwoods Park pool filtration tanks um, is related to a couple of tanks that are sand filled. Uh, they filter chlorinated water. Um, they are deteriorating and they're required for operation of the pool. So if they do fail, we'll have to shut the pool down. Um, so that was a request that came in under the park and rec category. Silas Dean Mill School Air Handler, $385,000. Um, the new system that they were going to put in was designed uh, in 2013. However, it was never funded. Um, it requires a lot of maintenance. So this is a full replacement of that system uh, based on the design. Or I'm sure they'll review the design before they move forward with the, the project. Uh, miscellaneous drainage is, is one of my requests. Um, we often have a lot of areas in town where we experience uh, flooding and safety issues. These are really for smaller projects that don't rise to the level of a capital project and uh, there's, there's no funding available for it. So with these types of projects, it'd be staff would have the availability to have money available when we need it to do smaller projects. Um, number 16 is a, is a uh, large request for $618,000 for the fire department. Um, this is for replacing their uh, self-contained breathing apparatus equipment or SCBA. Um, this would be to purchase 68 um, new piece of equipment with harnesses, face masks, uh, two cylinders each. Um, the equipment they have now has reached the end of its um, service life. And to meet uh, National Fire Protection Agency standards, it needs to be replaced. Um, they have applied for a grant funding, um, which we don't know the result, won't know the results of for a few months. So at this point, it's been added into um, the capital list for funding. Um, in the event they do not get it, it would at least be on the list for consideration. Just number 18, quick on the plan of conservation and development. Um, that came through last year. The initial uh, phase of funding of $50,000 was allocated last year with the understanding that the, the second $50,000 would be allocated this year. So that's coming back through. This would fully fund um, the update to the POCD, uh, as well as an affordable housing plan and potentially an update to the Silas Dean Highway Master Plan. Uh, number 19 is for uh, asbestos removal and the flooring and new carpeting at Hanmer and Charles Wright schools. Um, that has been on the list for a while, although I don't think it had been funded. Um, I think it actually was funded a number of years ago, but with, there was an emergency leak at Silas D. Middle School, so the funding for this project got transferred to a different project to do that. So now um, the request is back in to, to do this project at those two schools. Um, number 20 is administrative costs for ARPA projects. So what this, uh, the number of 700,000 was generated based on looking at all the projects that um, were initially intended for ARPA and that don't have um, design already somewhere here on this list. It is to retain consultants to do design um, to assist with other aspects of permitting and construction inspection associated with the project. One of the issues is, you know, we're getting such a large amount of money that needs to be spent within a certain amount of time. So staff is stretch pretty thin at this point. So this is to really just have money available to have uh, staff be able to retain consultants that are still gonna need to be managed, but at least it'll give us more um, ability to get the projects done and get them moving. Cause there's gonna be multiple projects for multiple departments on track at the same time to be able to, to expend these funds in the next few years that's required. 21 is new, that's the ambulance roof building, uh, just has a lot of leaks and needs repairs. That's for a complete replacement. Um, I mentioned Copper Mill Road Culver, so this is $50,000 to start funding the town's match for the state local bridge program application. We estimate that's going to require about $300,000 worth of funding. Um, it may be a few years out still because we still haven't done the design. However, we're starting to try and fund that. A police department HVAC system. Um, they're having issues with the computer servers, often overheating and they shut down because um, the system cannot keep up with um, the equipment now that's in some of the rooms in there. It requires a lot of repair. Um, it's a public safety issue. 
So this is funding for design and construction of a new system there that would adequately um, cool the building. Old Academy roof design, um, the cedar shingle roof at the Old Academy building has been leaking. Um, this is funding specifically for design of a new roof system. It's $37,000 request. Solomon Wells House Repairs has been on the list or it's been requested a number of times. Um, I don't believe it's come to you. That's $154,000 that will include uh, window repairs to the building, painting, um, completing some ADA improvements that are necessary. Number 27, Old Academy Air Handler. Um, that building also has a very old air system. Um, the parts, from what I understand, are, are no longer available, so staff has a hard time um, maintaining the system. Um, so it needs to be uh, needs to be replaced. So there's a thirty thousand dollar request for that. Town garage roof is new. That's a four hundred thousand dollar request. Um, it, the, the roof on the garage has been leaking for many years. It's over twenty years old. Um, requires replacement. <clears throat> That's based on recommendations from T Tremco, who is the town's roofing consultant. Building facilities assessment number twenty nine for a hundred thousand um, dollars. That's really to go through the entire town, um, look at all the buildings, um, evaluate them and help with capital planning going forward. So staff has a better understanding of what the needs are gonna be for each building, um, along with those, the costs and in developing a schedule to implement the plan. So that is really just to get a snapshot of all that information at once um, to help staff going forward. Uh, number 30, social services, ADA curbing. Um, during the pandemic, uh, social services that works and uh, helps with food donations to residents in need we couldn't have them coming into the building, so they started using the front circle off of Silas Dean Highway here at Town Hall with one of the access doors down there. And uh, I guess it's proven to work very well. One of the issues they have is they just have a hard time with the carts that come in and out trying to get them over the curb. And there's been some deterioration of the sidewalk there. So this is really just to give them some um, a landing and a concrete pad where they can roll right out to the cars with the, um, with the foods and for donations, both drop offs and pickups. Um, so that was a request from them. Um, number 31, the new voiceover internet uh, phone system is just a replacement of the town system. It's over 25 years old. Um, from what I understand, it's, it's been limping along and we've been fortunate we haven't had more problems with it than we have, but um, it's something that's been in need of replacement for, for many years. So that's a $350,000 request. Uh, number 32 is a library generator design. Um, right now, we don't have a generator that serves the library. So the thought was by putting one in, um, the facility could also serve for warming and cooling, a charging station during power outages for the town. So this is a request for $35,000 for design. The next item for $110,000 is the same project. That's just to fund the installation of what's expected uh, to cost. Millwood's parking lot uh, has been on the plan for a while, or it's been a request. It's been on the master plan for the park. Um, that's for construction of a new gravel parking lot um, near the tennis courts and softball fields um, to help with the parking situation that they have down there. Uh, number 36, the Keeney Air Handler Hot Water Project. Um, it's just the these systems are just old and obsolete and inefficient. Um, so the staff is looking to upgrade it to a more efficient system. Um, number 37 is a basketball and tennis court resurfacing. Um, you may have seen some projects come through in the past for specific courts. Um, this is really looking at um, all of the courts that we have. It's a $440,000 request. Um, they have been getting a lot of use, uh, particularly with the pandemic the last few years. Um, this work will include filling cracks, um, sealing, applying a, a color coat base to the surface, filling in depressions and things of that nature. So it's for multiple parks throughout town, uh, for multiple courts throughout town uh, for repairs. Uh, Old Academy replaced roof chimney and structural engineering. So I mentioned the, the roof earlier that's leaking. Um, there's also uh, issues with the chimney is becoming structurally um, uh, insufficient as well as the, the cupola on top. Um, so this is to have an engineer evaluate those structurally and then also include a construction cost, which was the roof and uh, anticipated repairs to both of those structures. Uh, Town Hall Library, it's, it's got an old aging HVAC system, often fails. It was put in back in the 1980s. Um, so the number 39 is a request to um, have that uh, replaced uh, with a newer system. Uh, number 40 is new. Uh, this is at the high school softball field, at Catone Field on the turf. 
Um, some of the parents uh, have asked for um, more facilities for the softball teams. So th this funding would provide new dugouts, um, scoreboard, run some electricity over to the field that they can use uh, as needed, um, and some spectator seating. So this is to contribute as a as a town match to an overall project. Um, there's a parents group that is raising funds to help fund it. Um, so this is a, a partial funding um, to, to, as the town's uh, contribution. Uh, okay, we're almost there, last nine. Uh, number 41, AV uh, council chambers. That's just to upgrade our equipment that we're using for tonight's meeting. Um, it's a little bit dated. Uh, the upgrades will allow us to do HD broadcasts that are much better definition, um, particularly as we get back to in-person meetings and people are doing presentations on a board up in the front. Um, it's very hard to see now, so that will give a better, better picture to those viewing um, online or at home. Um, also, uh, the newer system will be more user friendly and allow uh, give the IT staff who has been having to staff uh, the meetings very often uh, more of a break and allow other people to be able to do it because it'll be easier to use. So that's a fairly large request. That's $125,000. Um, furniture replacements has been on the list for a while. It's just school furniture is aging. It's over 20 years old. I'm um, looking to do some replacement. I mean, that amount, from what I understand, would fund replacement for two classrooms. Um, I assume they would, you know, use it however they feel they want to use it, but that's, that it's about $25,000 per classroom to fully fit out one with new furniture. Social services food bank. Um, this is a request to uh, purchase shelves, uh, have better organization here in town hall. They had a design done already by a consultant as far as how the layout will go. Um, they get, they've been getting a lot of donations, which has been great, but they're having a hard time finding place for it. They've taken over some of the conference rooms. Um, there are requirements that the food has to stay off the floor. Um, so this is just to uh, better organize and give them a better facility to, to uh, do that work. Number 44, the matching funds for federal infrastructure grants, $250,000. Um, as you may have heard, there was a recent uh, federal transportation infrastructure spending bill that had passed Congress. Um, money will be coming to the state of Connecticut. We anticipate from uh, webinars we've been attending that uh, municipalities will have an opportunity to apply and compete for those funds through various uh, state programs. Depending on the program, a lot of them require a town match. Um, so this was to put some money aside so we have money available as a town match for those projects when they come to be, which um, to, based on our understanding, it's gonna be very soon, unlikely this year, that will start happening. Um, number 45 is just, a, it's a large request for 404,000. Um, that is for upgrading current parks. It includes multiple parks, um, including the Keisha Farms, um, some work at Keisha Farms, playground equipment, um, Little League classic baseball field, um, and needs drainage and some renovation work done. So it incorporates a lot of our uh, town, town parks and improvements. Uh, Solomon Wells House parking lot has been on the uh, Park and Recs list for a long time. The, the rear parking lot often has uh, potholes, a lot of icing ish, maintenance issues. So this would be to design and build a new parking lot with appropriate drainage um, out and back. The library redesign project has come in uh, on and off over the last few years. Um, right now, the estimate for the work that they're looking to do is about $2 million. Um, there may be state funds available that they're looking um, to seek right now, um, but at least this is a partial funding towards it. Uh, in the event uh, there is a town match, it would go towards that. Um, the RFID replacement at the library is the radio frequency identification system. Um, they use that for um, checking uh, out books right now. So it needs new hardware, new software. Um, they're also looking to expand it to include a check-in sorting system um, to, do, uh, to, to do more, require less um, staff time to do it and less having to interact with the public. Um, they're able to do a lot of that on their own. And finally, the last one, Old Weathersfield Parking. Um, the town had uh, put in an application. We did get state grant and aid funds of so $500,000 uh, recently for um, taking the parking lot that's public behind Firehouse One and looking at an expansion that would include some of the abutting properties. Um, we estimated the, the cost of the project, that was to cover the initial phases. The overall cost was just over a million dollars. So this request was really to just fully fund the project to supplement the funds we already have um, to try and help alleviate the parking situation we have down in Old Weathersfield. So with that, I'd be happy to answer right. any specific questions. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, anybody have any questions? Which is Dave Drake. Okay, can, can I ask a question? Okay, Dave. Yeah, yeah hey, sure. uh, refresh me. 
someone on the committee web web windows on the interior courtyard that we're always this is always on a list what, what, did they get done a while ago or are they just gone now trying to there's remember. always a big number there's always on every, all this list for years and uh, i i just don't know if they were done not or not or it just disappeared i, I think I someone must know what i'm talking about yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know what you're talking about. It had, it had come up um, when I first got here a few years ago. It has not been on the list the last few years. So um, I'm not sure. I don't believe they got done. It may have just been a change in direction on what we were going to do with the with the windows. I mean, they, was, they were always to me. Again, I was on this committee one time in school committees. I was always like a top 10. It just seems like an opportunity to get those done because they were very expensive. You know, I just surprised it disappeared. But anyways, I, I don't I don't know. I, I would think someone would take another look at that and see if that, that was, again, 15 years ago as a priority. And it got thrown out because we had to do a quick boiler replacement at the time that was redone. And uh, the window cost just got out of hand. I, I don't know. Seems odd. It's not on the list. Um, Mr. Chair, do, um, Mr. Drake, I can check with the superintendent tomorrow. This is, uh, by the way, Bonnie Thering, interim town manager. Oh, Bonnie, how are you? Yeah. Good, David, how are you? Good. So you um, remember those windows, right? So that was a while I, ago, like I said. Oh say, my yeah. God, that's like years ago. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, but just so you know, I, I did speak to the superintendent when I was putting the list together, and I did say to Mr. Emmett, um, "What do you want on this list?" Um, the you know for ARPA because they have their own set of ARPA funds and the only thing he asked for was Silas Dean HVAC but okay. I will double check and I will make sure everybody finds out about those windows yeah because I, they were on for a long time and, and its price just went out it got out of so far out of control and you can see it was never ever going to get done because it was just too much money and it's just you know be an opportunity here but anyways very good thanks Bonnie if you check yep. into it no problem yeah, I remember that, Dave. It was like seven or nine hundred thousand dollars, and it was, you know, between that and the Charles Wright skylight, it was it was on the list for every year for about fifteen it, years. It went from one hundred eighty to like eight hundred thousand in like six months. You know, and never yeah, yeah. so it just it was a lot. Yeah. This is Chairman. Right. I have a anybody question. else? Yeah, sure, Peter. Is, yeah, uh, on the old Weathersfield parking, Derek. Uh, has this been designed? You mentioned that there was a number of properties that would be incorporated. Are these private properties or is it town properties? I'm just curious, what, what's the design gonna look like and how far along are we? Yeah, at this point, it's, it's just a conceptual design on an aerial photo, so it's very preliminary. Um, we, we were looking at potential expansion that would go from the Charles um, along Center Street north um, just to uh, portions of the Webb Dean Stevens property um, at the rear. So it's four or five properties and through there, they are, they are private. We have been talking with the, with the owners of the properties um, about the plan and we're making, currently making some revisions based on those conversations um, with the intention of going back and having further talks with them about it. And how many parking spaces are we adding if we did that? I wanna say uh, we're going from around 59 or so spaces right now to 128, I believe, with the new layout. So it's a significant increase. Yeah, that's substantial. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Thank you. All right. I can see George's lips moving, but he's muted. Let's see if I can. We've got that. Now we've got it. Uh, All right, here we go. Yeah, I, uh, I'm concerned, uh, Derek, with, are you going to start inspecting sidewalks again? You've stopped it about uh, three or four years ago, and all you have in this budget is uh, doing the plates uh, when you have to do construction on new roads in town uh, for the handicap, you know, handicap plates. But uh, we're not dealing with sidewalks at all. And uh, I, I'd like to think we ought to get back to that, even somebody which we used to have part time or go out and uh, inspect sidewalks for keeping them up and uh, and the homeowners repairing them. Of course, I don't agree with the program the town has. I think the town ought to be repairing its own sidewalks, but that's another issue. Uh, 
but some of them are really deteriorating now and we're not inspecting any of them and calling attention to the homeowner to repair them. Uh, will you, are you thinking of anything along that line? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're always aware of them. I know we've discussed this in the past. Um, I do have a part-time sidewalk inspector who manages our program. Um, we don't have a request in here because uh, we do have, as you mentioned, the CIP request for the ramps, but I also have money in my operating budget annually for sidewalks as well. That is about all we can get due spending those funds uh, every year for what the town is responsible for repairing. Um, you noted uh, correctly that you know here in town, the residents are responsible for their walks and we do issue notices every year. Um, we don't, we've, we've tried, we just haven't had time to really do a formal inspection program. So it's mostly react, react, reactive um, to complaints that we get or where we're notified of things of that nature. The, the issue is that it takes a lot of time and a lot of coordination with a lot of property owners. So our part-time person you know, can only do so much. So we do as much as we can. Um, if in the event that becomes a full-time position at a later date, then we have more opportunity to do that. But um, you know, I understand your concern. We're doing the best we can with the funding and the staffing we have available right now. But all I'm saying is that up till about six years ago, I'd say uh, we used to inspect and I used to see the markings on our sidewalks around my neighborhood and and I walk a lot of the town now and I see what's going on and uh, I'm not happy with it uh, because we're not doing anything and we're not requiring these people to repair their sidewalks because they don't think of them as an issue. They think it's the town sidewalk and the town responsibility. So uh, I would like to you know, remind people maybe uh, the manager should put something in in uh, you know the tax forms about the responsibility for sidewalks on those people that do have them. And uh, I'm, I'm not saying we need to get into new sidewalk construction. That's another issue. We spent a little time a couple of years ago with a sidewalk uh, bike and walking committee, right? You, you self serve on that, but we didn't do anything with it. Uh, but I'd, I'd really like to get back to at least the inspection, inspecting and marking up some of the sidewalks and trying to get people to, to uh, take care of them. Yeah, I understand. I mean, the only thing I could offer is uh, about that time frame, uh, six years ago, we we went from a full time position to a part time position here, um, before I got here. So I, I don't I don't know the reasons for that, but that certainly has been detrimental to the sidewalk work, um, just for that reason alone. Um, we did just hire I'm a new talking, sidewalk. I'm talking to you, but I'm also talking right now to the council who I don't like to get in front of because they have their own duties and I have mine on planning and zoning. But uh, I think this is a very important matter and I'd like uh, some consideration to be given to more inspecting and marking of and uh, trying to get homeowners to take care of their, their sidewalks. They're getting worse in town and not getting better. Nobody, nobody does them unless they're told they have to do. Thank you. Okay, thanks, George. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Tom Dean here. Sure, Tom. Um, I'm, uh, I've, um, uh, I have a question or concern relating to the uh, uh, proposed uh, HVAC uh, replacement at the uh, police headquarters. Um, it was indicated that the reason for this uh, replacement is due to the fact that uh, uh, the um, computer servers that are at the police headquarters are putting out so much heat that the uh, HVAC equipment originally installed is, uh, is unable to uh, take care or, or dissipate that, uh, that amount of heat that's produced. Um, it, uh, looking at it just uh, uh, casually, uh, you know, on a gross kind of basis, one could think that uh, this could possibly be a design flaw on a uh, town facility that was, uh, you know, relatively recently constructed. I think it was uh, completed in 2006 or 2007. And... Um, uh, 
I'm, I'm just wondering uh, whether or not any investigation uh, or um, look see was done uh, by uh, town authorities uh, as to whether or not there was a design flaw in um, in the installation of the original equipment, and uh, if so, was there any attempt to um, uh, uh, to hold the uh, the designers of the of the project uh, responsible? I'm I'm well aware that uh, probably a statute of limitations for any kind of legal action is probably passed by this time, but uh, I'm. Uh, I'm just curious as to whether or not uh, that examination had been done. Uh, this is Bonnie. No, not since I've been here. Um, but we have just very recently, in fact, we just had an engineer come in February 22nd to give a full report on that. But that's certainly something I can take a look at with the town attorney. Well, I I would suggest it. I, I was on a project uh, of for another town years ago um, in which uh, it was a high school renovation project in which uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, new um, uh, data processing computer equipment uh, put in and uh, the designers had put it in the wrong place where uh, it, w it really conflicted with the, the, the facilities uh, uh, HVAC equipment, and um, you know the uh, the designers in that project were actually uh, found to be in error, and uh, uh, they wound up eating uh, about over a million dollars in, uh, uh, in in costs to correct the design for that uh, uh, that part of the the facility. And um, so it, it can come to, you know, considerable amounts of money. Uh, as I re indicated, I think the, uh, the timeline is probably passed for any kind of uh, legal action at this point in time, but I think it's worth exploring if it has not already been done so. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Um, Anybody else have any questions, comments for Derek or Mr. Turgeon? Okay, um, if not, this is an 824 referral and the objective is that we either give a, uh, an affirmative or a negative report to the town council uh, with respect to our view of the capital priorities from the perspective of town planning, not necessarily from town finances, but uh, with respect to town properties and facilities, whether we believe this is a, you know, an appropriate um, set of um, set of activities. So, um, again, I, I guess just quickly, there are ten of us here, so I will. Um, Trying to remember the rotation. I think I'll ask Dave Drake to sit this one out, um, but everybody else will be seated. Does somebody want to make a motion? Chairman, I'll try. I think I'll... Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm I'm willing to see to George in this, this issue. Oh well, I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to recommend to the town council that uh, we, uh, we we review and uh, we recommend uh, we go ahead with the five-year capital improvement program. I'll second that. Okay, motion by George, second by Joe to give a, a positive uh, report on the referral of the uh, five-year capital improvement program budget. Um, any further discussion? Not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, next item, I guess, is another uh, another 
Derek Greger presentation, I would assume. Community Connectivity Grant Program, um, Old Weathersfield Safety Improvements presentation. Yes, uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I'm here again tonight, similar to what I did a few weeks ago with our Wolfville Hill Road reconstruction project, just to give you an overview of a project that we're in final design stage now, um, just to uh, let you see it and have, you know, have the opportunity to get some feedback from you. Um, these are for planned safety improvements in Old Weathersfield. Um, in 2017, the town applied um, to the state's community connectivity grant program. Uh, we were awarded $393,000. Um, that initial application included work at 10 different locations in Old Weathersfield. However, since 2017, um, increased costs due to inflation and the pandemic um, required us to really focus on the main project areas with the funding we had available. Um, and those are the intersections of Main Street and Hartford Avenue, Main Street and State Street, and Garden Street and Knott Street were really the largest project areas that we had. Um, the scope of work, um, what we've done is we've tried to incorporate some of the all, you know, some portions of the projects where we can into these. So four of the initial 10 projects are in these three. And then there's some other um, um, facets of the other projects that we've tried to incorporate where we can. Um, the scope of the work for the, for the Main Street intersections has also increased from what we were originally planning to do. Uh, once the funding came in, uh, we started taking a closer look at it, getting into design. Um, we opted to make some more improvements that um, I think are going to make things a little safer, parking a little better down there than was originally intended. Um, so that also has increased the cost of those projects, even from what we originally intended. Um, but we have spoken with DOT. They're fine with us you know, modifying the scope to meet what we have available for funds. So um, some of the projects that were in the initial application but are not um, going to get done with the project, we'll, we'll, we'll try and do in a future project with other funding or find another way to do it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just briefly go through the plans and um, you know, see if you guys want to provide any feedback. I'd be happy to hear it. Let me see if I can share my screen. Okay. All right. Can everyone see the plan up of Main Street and Hartford Avenue? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. All right, so this is uh, existing conditions here now. Um, what we what you see in dark gray is the existing roadway. Um, right now, north is to the right of the screen. <clears throat> this is Main Street um, to the north of Church Street, and this is Hartford Avenue. Um, right now, the road's very wide. We have very wide travel lanes. Um, if you've been through the intersection going northbound, there is no stop sign, however, coming uh, southbound on Main Street or approaching Main Street from Hartford Avenue, there are stop signs, which is often very confusing. Um, right now, we have a we have a very wide uh, intersection here with a very long pedestrian crossing, and that is in the middle of a, of an area that's used for parallel parking along the east side of the road. Um, it's not formal parallel parking, but that's what it's typically used for. Um, so, you know, given the heavy traffic volume that we have down here, as well as pedestrian uh, traffic. Um, we look, we're looking at some improvements here shown on this plan, uh, which is oriented the same way. Yeah. Let me just do this before I make a mess with my plan. So with this layout, we are looking at doing, doing some major things. So the major work that we're looking to do um, is to construct some new angled parking spaces uh, to eliminate you know, parallel parking along the road. So those new spaces are encompassed um, right here on this, uh, this corner of the intersection. We have one, uh, we've fit in five new spaces down here just to the south of the intersection. The area to the north of the intersection on the east, <coughs> east side, excuse me, is where we have that parallel parking. So we're looking at angled head in parking, similar to what we have throughout the, the rest of the area. There's a number of spaces here as well as we're considering expanding the, um, the parallel parking on the west side of the road a few spaces to the north. Um, while we're doing that, as you can see in what's green is what was pavement and will now become uh, grass areas. So we're going to tighten up the intersection here. Uh, that will allow us to shorten the pedestrian crossings <clears throat> as well as put in a stop sign for the northbound direction. So that way we'd have a traditional three-way stop, um, which I think would be less confusing for drivers um, and safer condition for uh, pedestrians. We're also looking at um, providing a, a mid-block crossing down here um, between Church Street and Hartford Avenue. Um, this will 
cost us about three spaces in this particular area, but it will provide a, a, a place for pedestrians to cross. It's narrower. This is the driveway to the heirloom market. So it's just immediately south of that. Um, we're also looking at some brick pavers. So the new um, connections here, like you see connections going from the existing walk out to the road are going to be brick pavers. Um, we have some brick pavers going in here on the corners on the uh, west side of the intersection. Um, we have a problem now with a lot of pedestrians because the right of way is so wide here. Um, people walking along the walks uh, tend to want to cross Hartford Avenue back here rather than coming down to the crosswalk um, just because it's easier, but it's, it's a dangerous situation because we have traffic you know, traveling back and forth and they're also crossing behind the existing stop bar. So we're trying to angle those corners a little bit to just make it easier to get to the corner. We've pushed the, you can see the old crosswalk, we're pushing the crosswalk to the west as much as we can. Um, we have some new uh, handicap ramps and uh, brick walks going in here. Um, this will be just more green area. We are looking at um, after the project doing whether it's some more signage or some landscaping where these uh, two existing walks kind of terminate at the road to try and further encourage people to come down uh, to the intersection for a crossing. And uh, with this layout, we're able to provide some uh, additional handicap parking in the area. So uh, we're looking at one over here to the north of the intersection on the west side, also providing one on the east side. Um, it gives us an opportunity to do that. This is on the uh, CT transit route. So we have been in conversations with them about it. Um, they're looking at, they're gonna consolidate some of their stops here. So currently there's a stop right on this corner where there really is no pad or no good place to stand. Um, they're gonna consolidate with that with a stop that's uh, also southbound across from Hart Street. Um, there is a northbound stop um, in this vicinity that they're, they're going to keep, um, but they are gonna at least take the stop out in this location, which will help with um, just safety for, uh, for their patrons getting on the buses. Um, another thing I just wanna mention is we're, you know, we're gonna realign some of the striping down here. Um, we're looking at doing 10 foot travel lanes. Um, Given that this is a, a you know a, a heavily uh, pedestrian commercial area of town, um, we got a lot of pedestrian traffic. So that the narrower lanes will help slow traffic down. It also will provide um, shoulders that are available for for bike use um, that don't exist right now. Um, so this will be a, I think it will be helping to define travel lanes better and also um, you know make things safer for everyone out there. So that is a theme that we're looking at you know all the way up and down Main Street. Um, as part of uh, an upcoming project we're planning. But in this area, we, we would do this at least for now um, as part of this project. So I'm gonna move on to uh, the next intersection. Eric, when do you want questions? Um, yeah, you can ask a question, go ahead. Uh, I'll make a comment. <laughs> you know, when I walk down there and I'm, I don't live in Old Weathersfield, but I walk it down there a lot. And right, right there where Hartford Ave comes in, it, the sidewalks are so far back because the down Main Street is so wide and therefore the sidewalks are way back to the uh, property lines of the uh, owners. Uh, and then to get down here, you're gonna put hedges in here so that people won't walk, uh, that I won't violate going across the here instead of on the, uh, the uh, crosswalks. You're, you're improving it a little bit by moving, I think, the crosswalk on Hartford Ave up a little bit. But, uh, you know, I'd like to have less distance so that somehow you, I don't know, you'd did, you, you really don't encourage people to, uh, to use the crosswalk down there and walk all the way down and walk all the way back to the uh, southern side, you know, if, if you're walking south. I, I don't know what you have to say about that. I don't know if there's an answer, really. It's, it's a tough situation because of where the walks are located. You know, like you said, so far off of Main Street. Um, you know, like I say, we're trying some of what you see white here that looks like brick would be new new pavers. Um, we're just trying to make the corner a little bit easier so it's not such a far walk to get to the crossing like it used to be. And what I was saying is where where you're talking about people tend to want to cross back at the existing sidewalks. We'll we'll look at putting in some. Some more signs. I think there are signs there now. Say you know, cross that intersection. But no, you got to put in more, more than signs. Yeah, we can maybe, maybe do some more formal in signage or that in some landscaping. Nope. You got to put in hedges or something to oh, discourage that's, it. That's I mean that. 
that's something that will be done. Um, we'll, we'll talk about after the project because it wasn't incorporated yeah, this initially. Eric, uh, Derek, I do live in Old Weathersfield and George, I walk that practically every morning. And you're right, uh, everybody cuts the corner off straight across. I, I hardly ever see anybody going down to the where you know the crosswalk is. Why can't you move that all the way back so it's more of a straight line across? Are you talking about moving the crosswalk yeah. back to this yeah. point? Yeah, why don't you just move it straight back? That's what people normally do. That's that I see them doing all the time. Yeah, well, the, the issue here is we have a stop, we have a stop bar here that you, you can't we don't want to stop people so far back here. You're so far from the intersection, you don't have a great sight line. So that would be very yeah, we can to a point, but at this it's we're probably talking, you know, 50, 60 feet back from the intersection. That's going to be very confusing for a car that now is at the stop bar and then it's traveling and it's going to take them a while to get to the intersection. So we're trying to keep the intersection traffic stop bars and stop signs close and do what we can with addressing the, the pedestrian crossing as best we can. Yeah, um, you're going to mess with driver yeah. expectancy because they expect to stop at a stop sign. And if they're looking at the stop sign, they're not going to see the crosswalk that's not where it ordinarily should be. And you're going to have the people down at the corner trying to cross where the crosswalk is spotted because a lot of people hang out there in front of Griffith. Yeah, that yeah is I mean, and, and people coming, turning left to go up Hartford Avenue aren't going to expect to have pedestrians right. 75 feet away from the intersection. Well, that's what they're doing now, uh, believe it or not. So it, it's, it's a very dangerous situation as it exists because people do that anyways, and there's no marking and there's really no way to control it. So if, if, if what you're saying is, is yeah, it makes sense, uh, then I think George is right. You got to put some physical barrier to keep people from crossing. Strawberry or something, yeah. Up at the Most. existing sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that with physical services. That there are there are options. I, I was talking about some kind of landscaping, mulch, something people aren't going to want to walk through, and some plantings. Um, it just hasn't been designed yet. I mean, you could put planters there, right? Something that uh, would be pretty sturdy. Uh, people would probably avoid that, and you would you would force them to go to the corner. Yep. Understood. Are there any other questions before I move on? Okay, we can always come back <clears throat> if needed. Um, so this is the next intersection to the north, um, Main Street, <clears throat> same orientation, north is to your right, Main Street uh, going across the plan here with State Street. Um, you know, currently both sides of the uh, island that we have in the center of uh, the intersection are two-way. Um, as you come down State Street e eastbound towards Main Street, there is a yield here. Um, so traffic just kind of yields in and, um, you know, one of the issues we have is DMV is located up State Street, a lot of traffic back and forth. Um, people with this being so open tend to take this turn very fast. Um, just like we were talking about, we have the same situation here where sidewalks are far back um, away from the road because of where the right of way is and this is where the existing crossing is. So pedestrians are crossing, they, there's not a good sight line for vehicles traveling down Main Street to see them as they take the turn. Um, they're also beyond the island that's there now, so they have no refuge or place to stop. If they do stop for traffic, they're kind of stuck out in the roadway. Um, as well as down here, we have um, a crossing at um, crossing of Main Street at Howard Avenue that has no sidewalk connection. So um, pedestrians have to walk in the street to come down here, and then they got to walk over the grass or maybe make their way up this driveway. So it's just not a not a safe situation. Um, and just in general, this is just a very expansive paved area. There's a lot of um, a lot of excess pavement out here, as well as the wide travel lanes <coughs> without shoulders. So this is the plan that we're looking at. Um, what we're looking to do is increase the size of the island. Um, so we can reduce our travel lane widths um, right in here. This is the, you can see it underneath that's the existing island. So we're pushing it out to the south and out to the west quite a bit to make it larger. Um, in doing that, what we're looking to do is transition this from two way on each side of the island to one way. So traffic coming eastbound on State Street would come one way on this side of the island. Traffic going westbound would have to come up past the island, take a left turn and then travel up State Street 
that way. So as a way to try and prevent the fast vehicles making this turn, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be more than a 90 degree turn um, to make it, um, but it should slow down traffic and provide a you know, safer situation out there for everyone. Um, for this eastbound approach, we're looking at eliminating the yield sign and putting an actual stop sign and stop bar in here. Um, as a traditional T intersection, people come down, they'd have to stop. Um, there'll be a crosswalk here, similar to uh, what we were just talking about. Um, you know, we're trying to improve or make these connections easier to move the pedestrians closer to Main Street so they're more visible um, and, and if they're much shorter crossing. And they also, you know, would be crossing one way traffic and then they'd be in the island for a while, and then they would cross, cross other one way traffic. So it'd be a much safer situation than there is now. Um, we're tightening up the corners, just like the other plan. Um, what you see in green on the corners is existing pavement. Um, so we're looking to reduce that as much as possible. Um, on this side, you see a bump out <clears throat> on the north side of the island, 11 foot wide. The reason for that is, um, well, twofold. One is to provide uh, enough space for a larger truck like a tractor trailer that may occasionally come through to be able to, to comfortably make this turn and travel up State Street. And also it's going to have sort of a dual purpose and there is an existing CT transit bus stop in this area now. Um, so we're looking at putting in a, a bus stop pad here for this being the stop so the CT transit buses can pull into this area as well. Um, similarly, we're going to add one on the south side of the road for the eastbound stop along um, State Street. As far as the crossing over near Howard Avenue, we're going to completely eliminate the crossing that's there now and move it just to the south side of the intersection with a, with a curb bump out on the east side to reduce the crossing width. Um, so it'll be much shorter crossing. Um, there'll be, we need sidewalk connections to go from the existing walks that are backed by the right-of-way lines out to the street um, to, provide, to, get, to give access to these points. Um, similar to some of the other projects, uh, we're also looking at um, doing 10-foot travel lanes up through um, this segment of Main Street um, that'll provide Varying shoulder width um, in this area there, I think the narrowest is five feet at this point, but the rest of it is six feet or more, um, as well as providing um, some shoulder lines here along State Street. So we have a five foot lane um, coming eastbound and, and this wider 11 foot lane transitioning to a five foot lane for westbound traffic. Um, Eric, I got a quick question. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Done, have you done a traffic study to see how, how many people take that left to go to DMV? And we haven't done specific counts on speeds um, or it, I just, it's just more um, what, what we hear and what we see driving around town. Um, so I don't know the vehicle count offhand. Um, we, you know, like I said, we did design it so we can accommodate all vehicles. And the thought was, you know, we looked at different options here. If we could tee up these lanes a little bit better and you know, modify the island and it didn't make it smaller and tee this up more, but being that it's, you know, historic Weathersfield and trying not to take away from the island that we have, um, we just opted to, to expand it and look at the one, one way direction on each side. Yeah, no, I think this will be a, a big improvement. Again, this is an area that I walk a lot and even bike through there. It's dangerous right now with those, uh, uh, you know, open lanes. So I, I think this is great. The only thing is, you know, I do see a lot of traffic uh, in the mornings going to DMV. And I'm just wondering if they'll stack up for that left-hand turn now that you moved it to the north. So that's why I asked about the count. Yeah, I, I because there's not a lot of heavy traffic volume traveling south along Main Street in this area, you know, because it's kind of residential, you're at the cove there. I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. I think the main from what I've seen from available traffic count data, the main th thoroughfare is State Street to Main Street and there's less traffic at this end. So I think they're not gonna have to wait very long often for traffic traveling southbound on Main Street for them to make that left. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, comments? Okay. I'm gonna move on to the third and final intersection. <coughs> <clears throat> this is a Garden Street and not Street. So here the, we've reversed the plan. North is to your left. Uh, this is Standish Park, Garden Street uh, going left to right, and then North Street, uh, not Street, I'm sorry, going up and down on the page. Um, some of the issues we have out here, just these are they're just very wide turns, um, similar to what we've talked about. We have, because of the sidewalk being so far back from not Street, 
We have a pedestrian crossing that's pretty far back behind the existing stop bar on Garden. Um, so vehicles traveling along Knox Street and taking that turn often have a hard time with visibility or not seeing pedestrians well enough. We have a very long crossing across Knox Street, as well as these darker areas are just um, areas where the town has put pavement millings over time because people uh, you know, want to park in that area to use, use the park and they are driving up over the curb and straddling the curb now with some of the with their tires in the road and also off the road. Um, so it's being used that way, even though it's not really designed. Uh, there is no sidewalk in through here. The sidewalk um, that's coming northbound kind of goes off and directly into the park and the, and the sidewalk coming along Knott Street also goes into the park and there's no direct pedestrian connection in here. So with that, some of the improvements um, we were looking at, um, this, was a, this is the one that has a combination of a couple of the original plans. Um, one is to, uh, one thing we're going to be doing here is to tighten up the radii a bit. Um, we have talked with DOT. <clears throat> they were, uh, we agreed upon a radius that would suit their needs and, and also try and tighten up the intersection a little more. So the green is going to be former pavement that will be grass. Um, we'll be bringing, you know, new pedestrian connections into the new crosswalk and ramp. Um, and the, over here where we have the existing crosswalk, it's going to be eliminated at this point. So Everybody, whether crossing Knott Street or Garden Street, are going to do so here at the intersection. Um, some of this work was done. Uh, MDC, as you may know, had a large water main project recently. At the end of that, they were going to be paving. Um, so before they paved Knott Street, we eliminated this old uh, ramp and put in the new ramp with the new location of the new striping set up to match what we will be doing. So even though Garden Street also wasn't paved uh, too long ago, maybe about four years ago, um, this work and same with a lot of it is really just uh, cutting behind the new curb line and taking out the pavement, existing pavement will stay so um, should be minimal impact to the new new pavement that's out there, um, since we're just going to be installing curb um, over it and then cutting out what's behind it. For the parking area, um, we're looking at widening um, this about uh, 10 feet or so. Um, to provide space for for parking so we're going to take the existing edge of road and just push it back, um, pave it out to that. And what we're gonna, what you see in yellow here along the uh, pavement is a uh, integral concrete sidewalk and curb. So it's going to be a monolithic uh, single pour for the sidewalk that would go directly to the curb. Um, so there'd be no grass shelf in this particular area. That's a six foot wide walk that'll be adjacent to all the parking. Um, it'll provide uh, a direct connection between the existing sidewalk to the south and the sidewalk located to the north going around to Knott Street. Um, with this, we, we have some drainage improvements uh, as well. And while we're out here, we're going to upgrade uh, some of the ramps here at Hubbard Place that are um, not ADA compliant and also put in a painted crosswalk here, just given um, the proximity here to Hanmer Elementary School, um, as well as the Standish Park. You know, we felt it would be worthwhile um, to put a pedestrian crossing here also. I think, uh, so this, these spaces here, I didn't <clears throat> note it, but um, we could fit about 18 vehicles there. Uh, we're not gonna, we're not planning to actually stripe parallel parking. We're just going to leave it available for parking. Um, so, you know, we could get 17 to 18 cars in there. There is an existing parking lot that's used here. Um, so we're gonna have the sidewalk come across a concrete driveway apron that'll still be provided for this parking lot without impacting um, the available parking spaces that are there. Anyone have questions or comments on this location? Yeah, uh, we're open to public comment, right? Yeah. So All right. Uh, this is. I'm sorry. This is Bryce. Bryce Hardy, uh, 297 Hartford Ave. Um, I was fortunate enough to be at a meeting that proposed all this. I, I, I don't know, Derek. Maybe you can correct me, but at least 2019, 2018, we had a meeting on this. When it was first proposed, um, I want to. I, I think all these plans are really, really great. I think it's unfortunate that uh, the pandemic and you know budget restraints restricted some of these other plans that you had. But uh, I think these three proposals are really great. I walk around town and drive around town often uh, with my daughter, and especially this Hartford Ave um, view, I think is um, a huge, huge plus for safety. Um, and I, I appreciate the work that you guys have done. Uh, the only, my only comment on this plan is uh, I, I do think that lining those spots are, you know, is, is positive. I think, you know, 
people need um, guidance in parking, uh, you know, I think, uh, I, I think it could be helpful. Um, and besides that, I, I'm going back the one plan on State Street and Main Street. I think on the original plan that I had seen, you had you did tee it off a little bit more, uh, decreasing the size of the island, possibly, if I remember correctly, um, which I think could be beneficial. But I do understand, you know, we want to keep the um, historical integrity and also the, you know, some of the, the looks of that intersection, which I do appreciate driving by and seeing people, um, you know, enjoy that space and also shrinks the that large uh, walking space but you know, i applaud the work that is going on with all this thank you thank you all right thanks uh rob o'connor oh thank you <clears throat> thanks derek for the presentation um i'm also on bike walk weathersfield for full disclosure and this is i think this is one of our products that came out of that committee and all the work you guys did and i i almost hesitate to be negative because I know all the work that's been done in here, but for me, my first take is that it's 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 less. I mean, the connectivity program was really aimed at bicycle and pedestrian um, issues to make it safer and, and to to walk and bike, and then to make the area safer to walk and bike and, and you know have businesses and everything like that. And this 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 feels like, especially with the cut down to three areas, feels more like a a, a, a DOT project that just happens to have some good sidewalk and pedestrian issues. It, it, it's, I'm assuming a lot of the money is being put into the road improvements and the, the cuts. And I, I'm just a little disappointed that it's not more um, like the center street intersection, the bike lanes on Main Street. I know that the original plan that we, we in the budget, there was $8,000 for bicycle racks to really like rack that whole old weather's field. So it really did feel like a bicycle, like every place there was, you know, a place that you wanted to take your bike, you could. Um, the Mikey's place, the Garden Street improvement, it's it's good, but it, it's crazy there already with people parking. And this is just basically making it better for cars to sit there and blow their exhaust into, to a kid's playground, as opposed to like, you want to come to the playground, take your bike here or walk here. I mean, I think the sidewalks are good there, but like, a lot of these things all have an auto function, like the State Street thing with, with I think the bus bus stops are good, but I think our, our, our idea was that that was gonna be a way to, you could take your bicycle and ride up a nice bike lane up past DMV on State Street and not have to worry about a, a choke bus, you know, exhausting in your face. So I just, I mean, I, again, I, I, I know all the work that's gone into it. I think these are all gonna be positive, but I just wish that they were, that they, it was more focused on the intention of the connectivity grant, which if you read, you know, if you go back and read the original intentions for that grant, it was, it was all about bicycle and walking and, and encouraging more bicycle and walking. And this has, I mean, I wouldn't even mention parking. Parking shouldn't be part of bicycle and walking. That's part of driving. And it's like, and whether, and even the State Street thing, it's like, if this is an accommodation for people who are going to DMV, that's not people who live in, and Weathersfield and, and to become, I mean, it, it, it might become a safer walker area, but it's, it's, it's geared toward cars. And it's, it's a, and for me, it's a car centric solution and kind of like with some pedestrian bikes, not even like the bicycling, I think, I think it was only mentioned twice. I mean, there's not even a bike lane on this. I think the original thing had bike lanes on here, but I mean, we're, we'll, bicyclists will be put into the shoulders worried about these people. Uh, and I do, I do walk and bike this area. I live in Old Westfield. That that DMV area, I mean, I, I commute to my job that way. And that's like, that is, a, the car count has to be really, really high. I mean, everybody that's coming off of, off of Marsh Street and making a right is going to DMV basically in the morning. But, so those are my, my few comments, but I, I do appreciate all the work. I think, you know, it's like Bryce had said, it's, it, it, would, it would be, it would be nice to see the other parts of the plan. Maybe we, sh I know the connectivity grant has other um, opportunities to apply for it. Maybe we could get the other things put in there too, but. Yeah, I would, I would just offer uh, correctly. Yeah, the original application had a more comprehensive approach to Main Street because um, we had some work at Center Street. We had some work near the Keeney Center at the, at the intersection of Main and Church. Um, the reason why you know we we pulled some of that out, well, aside from the funding, is some of that other work 
is lower cost work that we can, I think we can do in other ways, either through future grants or with existing funding uh, that we have available. Um, so we took some of those smaller projects and, and moved them out so we could focus more on these larger projects that are going to be much harder for us to fund without having state grants like this. Um, mm. With regard to, you know, shoulder lines and, and bike lanes, there's going to be a larger discussion about what we want to sign as and make it an official bike lane versus just the shoulder. Although the original plan called for shoulders um, up and down Main Street from Center Street all the way up to this area, which are relatively cheap to install. Actually, if on these plans, we've noted that the town's going to do it so we can do it comprehensively throughout the run. So that's a low cost item that we, we can get done. That was part of it. Um, you know, we could do it ourselves with it. So the point I'm trying to make is we're trying to focus these funds on the projects that would be harder for us to fund and the smaller, easier ones that are fun. We, we, we're not forgetting about, we still want to get them done. It's just, we got to pick and choose what we can do now. And to be honest with you, even these three are, we're or right now we're estimating we're over budget. So mm -hmm. we may have to do some cutbacks and may, you know, maybe you know, we'll have to decide on what that's going to be. Um, but since we were going to be working in these areas, we, you know, we tied in some of the parking improvements, say at Hartford Avenue um, and Main Street, because there's such a need down there and we're already there doing, um, you know, improvements at the intersection. So I understand what you're saying. And we'll, you know, we'll certainly keep those on the radar as we as we move forward and have other opportunities that come up. Thanks. Do you think, do you think bike racks that the bike racks were in there just fall out or could, could some of those? Be yeah, like, like I mean, over by, the, over by Mikey's place is an old rack there. And some of these racks are not that expensive just to have some hoops. I think initially there was maybe $8,000 in it for uh, maybe eight bike racks or so. Um, yeah, I mean, at the time we, we figured we could find another way to get those. So mm -hmm. if, if it turns out these projects uh, come in uh, under budget and we have funds available, then there'll be some opportunity to do um, some of those other things that were not in it. The, the way it will be written, it will be flexible where we can you know, add more work if, if we have funds available to do it. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Sullivan. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, uh, Kevin Sullivan, 79 Wright Road. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that, Derek. I, I can see the uh, the uh, the three intersections that you covered tonight are, are more comprehensive uh, in combining some other work and, and they're, you know, the solutions being proposed are more comprehensive than before. So I can see how uh, some of the work has has shifted from the ten intersections to three. It, maybe it's inappropriate to express emotion really at, at a forum like this, but I, I think uh, em emotionally more than anything, I'm I'm disappointed with the with the reduction from ten to three, uh, partly because of the parking that's that the money is being spent for. Uh, it's a bit of a lightning rod issue with bike pad advocates, uh, but it's also, to me, uh, not real, not really an appropriate part of the scope of the intent for connectivity money. I I can sort of see that it, it making sense to you know if we're going to do parking, do it at the same time that you're working in the area. Can we uh, uh, maybe discuss uh, using some ARPA money? to supplement uh, the construction projects to kind of put back in some of the connectivity plans that we had before. Um, I think Derek, you mentioned um, Center Street and Kenya Center. I'm, I'm thinking or hoping that uh, those improvements would be included in the parking discussions uh, that are happening. Uh, I can't say that I'm, uh, overly ecstatic about so much additional parking. Uh, I know in some ways it's sort of needed, but uh, I fear that m even more cars are going to be attracted in the name of economic development. I know economic development is important, but I fear that too many cars are going to kind of crush old Weathersfield. And uh, one of my personal intentions anyway, with, with trying to push bike pad was to get more people to Old Weathersfield by by bike and by foot. Uh, so hopefully not to crush it. Um, 
I guess I'm rambling a little bit, but I guess my point would be, I hope there's some discussion of some of these improvements and maybe others around town as well, uh, using some of the ARPA money rather than rushing to trying to uh, upgrade air conditioning units and stuff like that. Um, and also uh, if we can kind of make a mental note to ensure Center Street and Kenya Center get included in, in the uh, parking lot uh, reconstruction. Thank you. Okay, and just for the record, you know, we did meet with DOT uh, recently, I think it was in November to go over these plans and the changes in scope. Um, Cause I know there's been some comments about this isn't consistent with the, the funding and DOT was fully supportive of it, you know, understanding that there was going to be, you know, parking improvements as well as bike pad improvements. So, you know, I just want to be clear that they're not, you know, that we're not uh, jeopardizing the funding in any way by going forward with this because they've already approved, you know, the scope of work, what we're doing. But um, with regard to some of the other locations, yes, uh, the, the Keeney crossing where we have a demonstration crossing out there now. Um, may be part of what we can do with the parking uh, work we're hoping to do in the back um, of the fire station. And some of the other projects, like I said, are, are smaller in nature. Center Street, I, I may be able to do that with some of my operating funds um, because it's, it's sidewalk work and I do have some money for that. So where, where we can um, implement some of those in another way, we will. All right, thank you. Does anybody else on the uh, commission have any questions for Derek about this? If not, um, this will just say thank you very much for your uh, for your update, and uh, we appreciate your hard work on this project. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate being able to come in and talk to you about it. And, um, you know, there are some questions asked, so we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you with some answers on those. All right. Thanks very much. All right. Have a good night, everyone. You too. Take care. Thanks, Derek. All right. Uh, next item, 3.3 .3, public hearing 2122Z Bryce Hardy seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2 F2 permitted uses outdoor dining of the Weathersfield zoning regulations for a temporary patio with a service station at 161 Main Street. Again, this is a public hearing, so we'll hear from the applicant first and uh, discuss with the commission, then hear from the public um, and circle back to that. So with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant. If you could just Give us your name and address for the record. Um, sure. Tell us what you're looking to do. Sure. Uh, thank you for taking the time with me. And uh, my name is Bryce Hardy uh, with the Charles 161 Main Street, Weathersfield. And uh, what I'm asking is for a temporary patio at 161 Main Street. And um, I'm asking for a temporary patio for the, for the summer or for the, the remainder of 2022. Um, I think that uh, I deserve a, a fair shot at another another go at a, a temporary patio. Um, you know, uh, I guess the reason we're doing a temporary patio as full, some of you might be aware that I did go through HCC for, for full disclosure of this conversation and was approved with a permanent patio. Um, the reason I didn't come before you guys yet with that plan is because um, once we had it planned, uh, there's a significant expense to uh, creating the permanent patio, which is going to be a significant uh, upgrade to that corner and to the, to the property, uh, you know, pavers, walls, um, and, and, and things that go along with a permanent, um, a permanent patio. Uh, I think uh, to date, we've done a, a, per, a temporary patio very well. Uh, uh, we've done it safely. Uh, successfully for the restaurant and for our community. Uh, I, uh, and so that's what we're going to be asking for today. Um, so I'll just go through my list of things that we're, we're going to, we're, uh, we're asking for um, this year. Uh, the other reason I'm just to uh, go a little, uh, 
the reason I'm coming to you, to you guys for this, and at this point in time under Connecticut legislature law, uh, I don't have to come to um, this hearing for this. Uh, you know, right now we're operating under a, an extended use for restaurants that allows us to use any portion of our property and or uh, property next to us. And, uh, you know, and that's why I've been able to do what I've done for the last two years without coming before the public. Uh, this year, that expires on March 31st. And what I want to do is be proactive. Um, and I want to, I want a decision so that I can move forward with my business. I can start um, making plans and having that executed for as soon as I can for the spring use um, so that I can make as much, you know, as make much as that space that I can. Um, and I don't know what the state and the legislature is going to say, the governor is going to say in on March 31st. So let's get this out of the way and uh, see how we can be, we can all work together. Uh, this year, instead of having the tent on the sidewalk, um, we're going to ask that we have it on our, on the lawn. Um, it's going to be the same tent as it's been in the past. I own that tent. Uh, it's going to be the same exact thing. That uh, tent is 30 by 45. Um, we have to grade that. We have to grade the area. Um, obviously, we want to be comfortable for our guests. So we're going to grade the area. We're going to bring in um, some very finely crushed stone to make a very flat, hard surface. And on top of that, we are going to... Um, put down uh, essentially a carpet. It's gonna be a, a green carpet AstroTurf if you um, wanna think of it like that. Um, something that can be dust-free, which is a requirement from uh, our health department. And, uh, you know, it's gonna be, it'll be safe. It'll be uh, aesthetically pleasing. Um, and anywhere that needs, to, needs a, you know, a border of, for the retainment, uh, we're gonna put down something like a railroad tie. I don't have the exact uh, measurement, I, but I believe it's around eight inches that we drop off from the sidewalk that exists um, that along, runs alongside the building to where 30, you know, there's gonna be about five feet from the sidewalk to the um, start of the tent and then 30 feet out. So um, anywhere there's a difference in elevation, there'll be a, a retainment system, kind of like, I'm not sure exactly, you know, we're, we're thinking railroad tie type of thing, um, something, you know, like that. Uh, we are asking that we keep, uh, last year, we were able to in, approve through the town, uh, the ability to build a service station. And uh, we did uh, go forward with uh, uh, the, the uh, liquor commission to get a liquor permit for out there that so that we can serve alcohol. Um, and what I'm asking for this year is the exact same thing and the exact same use that we used. Um, I would say, you know, the, the most of the, most of the days it was used for um, service, which means there was supplies for our servers to, um, you know, use a computer to ring in orders, uh, supplies, that the you know guests need ketchups and salt and peppers and um, plates and silverware and, and that type of thing. Um, we did use it for alcohol at times, and those uses that we used that were for events. We used it uh, mostly under contracted events. We have an event uh, department, um, and some of those events we do sell um, liquor packages, and it it helps us as a restaurant to uh, be successful. In, in execution to have a, a remote bar that can, you know, serve more people than really what that bar was designed for. Um, there was a significant cost that went into that, uh, that building for that service area last year um, with plumbing, electrical, construct and the construction of the actual um, structure. Uh, and, uh, this is, that's exactly the way we want to run it this year. Uh, we're asked that that space does take up that uh, structure does take up one space of our parking lot. And we're asking to take the other space right next to it um, to be able to execute that safely. That will have um, to execute that safely. 
Um, power for that structure, for, power for the tent will be provided by an existing outlet attached to a parking lot, light, a uh, uh, lamppost. Um, I, I have in here that uh, I did run into a problem last year with the building department that wires were touching the actual metal frame, which was a, a safety hazard that we did adjust. Um, I just wanted to make sure that um, the building department knew that we would make sure that that wasn't a, a problem again. Uh, we'll have landscaping that will soften the aesthetic from Center Street and Main Street. The plan is to have um, kind of a raised flower bed that uh, will be really obviously aesthetically pleasing um, that will soften, you know, so that when you're driving by Center Street and Main Street, you're not just looking at people sitting in chairs. It'll kind of break up that space, not only for the community, but also for our guests. Um, Decorations for the tent will be the exact same I had last year. We had some lighting inside. Um, we kind of, we called it our secret garden, um, which will go with our kind of grassy um, AstroTurf uh, flooring. Um, very tastefully done. Uh, the seating plan you see uh, in our plan calls for, I believe, uh, nine tables. Um, that's the total capacity of the seating inside that we have planned is 50 people. There's more of a loungy area towards Main Street uh, that people can kind of sit and have a little bit more of a comfortable time. Uh, it might probably be better for our guests during the day and um, be just before the evening, and then they can kind of get seated to, to eat dinner. Um, for safety from the parking lot to the tent, we're uh, proposing bringing in some concrete barriers alongside the parking lot and the service bar area to protect the tent and guests from the vehicle parking. Um, obviously, I'm not sure what, I don't know if there's any regulations for that, but we can deal with that with the building department. Um, those will be either, uh, those will be not just gray, ugly blocks. There's gonna be something to that. I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna go, go about it at this point, but uh, that's how that's gonna be. Um, I, I, I wanna stress that the commission shouldn't worry about this not being temporary. I'm not, you know, I really do plan on having a permanent, uh, uh, permanent plan in the future, which, like I said, HDC has approved and are very excited about. Um, I can't wait to bring that to you guys. I think uh, it's going to be really, uh, really great to have kind of a, a more permanent thing there. Um, I think that's it. I think uh, I think I covered what we want to do. I think you, with the pictures that are attached, um, you can get a real understanding of uh, the, the size, you know, I want to, I also want to stress that, um, the picture that's there is not to scale perfectly. I had a, uh, I have a server who is going through an AutoCAD class that, uh, was really awesome and nice to build that for me. Um, but I think you get a really good picture of, of what it's going to be like. And I think it's a really good compromise for the community. I think, you know, the only, the only things I heard last year were parking issues um obviously the town is as we heard before is taking a lot of initiative to try to curb that and i think um we're really fortunate to be in a community that is growing and um with a town that's so receptive to uh you know bringing it all together um and i'm fortunate to be a part of that so um i think this works really well for everybody um i'm interested to hear the comments and look forward to working with the commission and our residents. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I, I guess before we, before I let anybody else go, um, and I'm sorry if I missed this. You, you know, you've said that these drawings are not to scale. How how big is the tent? We're a couple. If we're if we're off by scale, it's a. I would say it's within about 18 inches. But okay. I just don't want to be held. So big, the tent is 35 by 45. Okay. All right. Um, anybody else? Anybody have any questions for the applicant? Anybody from the commission? Uh, Rich, David Drake, quick, quick question. You want this through 22. Sure. So what happens next year? You come back, like you say, your permanent solution. Is that the idea? Does that question me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't have an answer for that. I think um, 
you know, we're doing the best we can just coming out of, and I don't, we're not out of it, but a, you know, a worldwide pandemic uh, where, you know, obviously, you know, many businesses and people are affected and I don't personally, and personally, I think the restaurant industry was hit one of the hardest. Um, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be here in front of you if I wasn't allowed by the state of Connecticut and our governor to have an outside patio. Um, that is just facts. And, and so, um, what I know today is that in order for my business to move forward, outside dining is necessary. And um, we've put a significant amount of money into um, the, the community, into the, that building. And in order to move forward with the business and be successful and do this, you know, and be here for a long time, I need another year with a temporary solution. No, no, I understand. Um, so basically, basically, you're looking for approval to get you through this year. Then next year, if you want to do it again, you can come back something more permanent or more whatever. What I'm yeah. asking is that this plan yeah. is approved till twenty through 2022. Right. Which is at that ball, point, whatever. my plan. Uh, honestly, you know, my plan right now, and I've already started the process. I've spent money on the on the on the drawings and engineering is to come before you. In a, in, in a couple months and get a permanent patio approved. Um, so that's my plan. I, I can't, yeah. <laughs> can't tell you if we're going to have a worldwide pandemic and, you know, but that's my, uh, that's what we are proposing. To no, do. I'm just, I'm just kind of thinking that, okay, we, you do this and we watch it. And in the fall, if it, if everybody's wonderful and happy, it just makes your life easier. But if everybody's not wonderful and happy, then, you know, we have a chance to take another look at it. So, yeah. Oh yeah. That's why, you know, that's yeah. why I'm asking for a temporary, you know, a, a temporary, this is a temporary solution. Oh, yeah. and, and, and I think what it's going to do is I think it'll show everyone what it, you know, what it's going to be and, you know, um, and that it can be done well and, uh, and successful. So. I have a quick question. Is there... George here. Oh. Hey, George. Oh, you want to talk? Go ahead, George. I'll I'll follow you. Um, what what I would like is is Bryce, you and or and the town staff to talk about the parking issue, which seems to concern a lot of people down here, and they sure. rightfully do. They've done it before, and Center Street is a problem parking in the area. And I know we're supposed to be providing parking, but I don't hear any details about how much is going in and exactly where. I mean, uh, town parking lot, uh, the fire station is supposed to be moving way back, but I don't know how far. And uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. Okay. So um, I just want to let you guys know that I've done everything possible to work with our community, with our residents of Center Street and Main Street. Um, we And George, I'm not sure if you do know, but there was a meeting back in... I believe it was the fall. I don't have the exact date. It might've been late summer, early fall, um, where we did sit down with, with the residents of Center Street and Main Street. And we, did, we hashed out uh, a lot of issues. And I think it was really good for all of us to sit in a, in a room with town staff and with the residents to, to you know, really flush out some problems. Um, I, uh, at that point, I did have a tent in the parking lot. So, um, you know, I, I, it, I understood, the, I, I understand the issues on center street and main street. I, I get it, but I think, um, I do believe that the town, whether they are outright and vocal on exactly what's happening publicly, they are working behind the scenes. I, I, I know it because I'm part of it. Um, and you know, I, I, I think it, I think it's, it is moving forward. And I think that the residents, um, our understanding that they're the, the town is is working for them. I think um, I think nobody on this call, nobody in this town, can say that I haven't done my due diligence in trying to um, lessen the effects of my business to the community. Um, I know that uh, I'm. I know that I know. I know no one can can say that because. I've done everything that everything possible and probably overboard financially and um, 
vocally that I can do to, to, to curb any kind of issues that happen um, at, to this point. So that's my, that's what I'm. Mr. Chair, I'd like to hear from Mr. Yeah, Chair, it's, Bo it's Bonnie. I was just going to try to answer George's other question. I mean, Derek uh, basically explained what's going on with the firehouse, the problem we've run into. He's got to do some revisions to that plan because we did run into an issue with one of the property owners on the design. So we have to kind of rework things. Certainly we need to get the rest of the funding in order to finish that parking. So I would not foresee that happening um, in 2022 this year. I would see it more as something for 23 so we can work out all the issues. Obviously there's Keeney Center. I think the hardest thing is though people do not wanna walk to put it bluntly. I mean, they just, they won't do it. And so they want the closest parks they could find. I mean, we've even had an issue with the fire department where we X out all the spots meant for the fire department and people still park there. I mean, it's pretty obvious you're not supposed to park there and yet they do. Um, and, and obviously my number one concern is public safety and getting those fire trucks out of there. Um, so, I mean, we do try to constantly look at other options, um, but again, you gotta have them so they're really close to wherever people are going or they won't even use them. I don't know if that's any question, George. How many spaces, Bonnie, do you think you're gonna put back there? I'm the thinking we want to have a, somewhere around 125, something like that. Um, really? But the thing is too, we've got to also do some work on the, uh, the, the community gardens. That's what I mean. I mean. Yeah. Because right now, obviously, they do not want to move at all. So we're trying to work with them to allow for some of that to still continue, but also um, get some parking in there also. And we also have to worry about the neighbors, too, with buffers. So, I mean, Derek, if, you know, and at some point, obviously, you'll see this whole plan, but uh, Derek's already put in there for buffers. Um, so that it doesn't affect the neighbors, you know, with a parking area. So lots of players that were juggling to try to get this thing to work. Thank you. I just wanted to ask. Okay, Joe. Thank you. Joe? I just wanted to ask the applicant, is this the same tent that you were using on the parking lot location that previously? Yeah, it's the exact same tent. So the, and in terms of the number of seats, will that be identical to what you had when it was on the parking lot or is that changing at all? Uh, no, it goes down significantly. Um, we actually, by the end of last summer, when things were going really well with um, the pandemic and all that, um, we, we actually did overextend ourselves. So this year we are protecting, we're protecting the, the business in the restaurant, uh, you know, we, we cut down the seating. There were 60 seats out there. We cut the seating down to, um, uh, there's nine tables of four. So, um, you know, 36 seats plus there are, there is like a lounge area. The, the, the seating plan is in there. Um, right, I thought I it said 50 total. Yeah. That's with the couch seating as well. So, uh, I, you how, know, and, how, and so, and then also outside, so last year we had 16 tables, almost 60 seats under the tent. Then we had the couch area; those held another 25. And then we had 21 seats on the on the lawn with the Adirondack chairs. This is just too much. So you were you were 100, 110 or something like that all told last year. About that. And and now you'll be down to a total of 50. 50 with with, with the lawn stuff. Right. Okay. Thank you. And how about would hours of operation? change at all from what they've been and what will they be uh no hours of operation aren't changing at all and uh again uh you know we've been incredibly courteous to our neighbors uh there has not been anyone outside uh under my control after 10 o'clock at night which was what the commission three years ago actually it's pretty funny because i think i was on this exact meeting this this meeting time 
three years ago because I remember hearing that whole meeting with Derek for <laughs> that day too after, but, uh, but um, yeah, uh, you know, we're not, we've abided by the, the rules that you guys set forth to begin with, which is a 10 o'clock quiet hours in the town. Thank you. With no complaints in two years as well, by the way. Mr. Okay, Chairman, George. I have a couple of questions, if I may. Just speak. Go ahead, sure. Peter. Go ahead, Peter. I had my hand up. Go ahead. All right, George. <laughs> thanks. Uh, George, by the way, no, great, no. great article, George. I really enjoyed reading about you. Well, thank you very much. Your, your airlifting during the Berlin uh, situation was amazing. I never knew that. Anyways, the questions, a uh, couple questions uh, to the applicant. Uh, I'm curious now, long term, is this going to be a covered dining area with a tent? Is that, Do you intend to do that or is it going to be something open like Lucky Lou's? Uh, for 2022, I'm planning on having a tent. I understand that. Long term is my question. Your long term. The long term plan. plan right now does not involve a tent. Okay, so it'll be, it'll be, just an open patio with probably some sort of umbrellas, I guess, like like Lucky Moon, right? I really don't want to handcuff myself into what I'm going to do in 23. Today, I'm asking for 2022 with a tent. Um, okay. Uh, I, I, I guess, you know, it, it's public knowledge. You can go to the HCC. I, I just don't want to publicly put anything out that I, it's, it's out there in HCC. And I do plan to come with anything permanent in front of you guys, obviously, with the same exact plan. Yeah, well, if this is a short-term solution, uh, if you consider just keeping what you have now, I mean, why are you spending the extra money at digging up all that lawn and putting down uh, material, compacting it, covering it, and then undo the whole thing in what, six, seven months? Why not just stay with what you have now? Why don't ask for that? Because I'm, because I don't, because the biggest issue in this town is parking. And I, so I want to make sure that the community and my guests have a parking spot to come to. Um, so the biggest reason is to come to you to ask to put it in, the, in there. So I don't have to take up par the parking. Okay. So you want to give back the parking is basically what you're trying to do with this temporary solution. That and plus, if I was a business owner in town and I had a chance to set something up temporary, test it out, see what kind of changes I'd make, and then come in and build it permanent, I think, you know, it's kind of an opportunity to do it he, the way he's doing it. Yeah. Uh, this question, back to parking, is probably for Derek. Uh, I think one of the letters that came through uh, had a couple of suggestions about how things may be mitigated on uh, the street there, Center Street, I think one way traffic was one idea, parking signs, there might've been a couple other things, I don't remember. There was a list of three or four items. Has that been considered to mitigate the problem there on Center Street, Derek? And can, if it hasn't been considered, can something like that be implemented for this proposal? Uh, I, I don't think Derek's, Derek's on the line anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, but what I'll do is pass along the comments from people for you guys tonight, and I'll make sure Derek has them um, in the morning. All right, Bonnie, that's great. Uh, there, there's a letter that was submitted uh, by one of the residents, uh, I guess, who's watched the situation carefully and has suggested three or four things to, to mitigate the problem. And that, that's what I'm wondering if we could look at that. Can we hear the letter? Uh, yeah, I guess we can. Richard, do you have the letter? Could you read that? Um, I can do that. I was gonna do it when we got to the public comment portion since the letters are public comment. All right. Okay. okay. I have questions, Mr. Chairman, when you got a chance. I'm all set. Okay, George, go ahead. You all set, Peter? Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, two things, uh, Bryce. Uh, explain the handicap getting around your site. Is it going to be flat enough and there's no problems with the handicap getting up through uh, from, say, uh, you know, from, from the streets, both streets? Uh, 
of course, you got the walkway along there. And but explain that. And then another thing would be the landscaping. You mentioned the landscaping along, uh, you know, both streets. Uh, explain what kind of landscaping is. I don't know what it is. Sure. Uh, handicapped it shouldn't be a problem. It's just going to be. Uh, it's just going to go right into that parking. Uh, I'm sorry, not parking lot. It's going to go right into the the, the existing walkway, the, the um, brick walkway. So there'll be no there'll be no up or down as guests come off the uh, that that walkway. Um, yeah, but that's the walkway next to the building, right? I mean, yep. I'm talking about their access into the site tables and the lounge area. Yeah, it's just yep. It's gonna we're gonna have it's gonna go right into it. You're, it's just, it's it's almost gonna it's just gonna look like grass going into what it what it is now. So this is going to be the whole site where the tent is is going to be equivalent to the walkway level. Correct. Correct. Really? Oh, okay. So you're going to be up higher than on the, uh, yeah, on the uh, yeah on the side street. Yeah, there. from that right. sidewalk, from the sidewalk to center street, thirty feet out is, like I said, I don't I don't have the exact, but I believe it's around eight inches. It could be six, it could be 10, but I, I believe it's around eight inches drop off. So that on the outside of that, for, to the, on the sidewalk of Center Street will be a, some sort of retainment um, if needed, you know, I, I, which I, I believe is gonna be needed. So there'll be a retainment of something that looks like a railroad tie or a wood, you know, a, a six by six or, or something like that. I'm, I'm not exactly sure of the material that we're gonna use for that. Um, I don't know so if that... from Center Street up to the walkway is going to be flat because you're going to have along Center Street, you're going to have some kind of ties or something to raise the level and make it uh, equivalent to the walkway level, right? Right. Yep. Okay. And then the way... on the sidewalk side, we'll actually have to dig in a little bit. So we're going to have to dig into that earth, you know, a little bit to, to, to just to be able to get the material in and then be level with the, the sidewalk with the, the what I'm calling AstroTurf. I don't know if that's exactly what it's called. It's a 250 a square foot at Home Depot. And it's a, you know, it's a green, you know, a carpet type um, material. But the handicap can get around the site. Is sort Absolutely, of what I'm there'll, be, there'll be no problem with handicap. Yep. Okay. yep. Uh, and then what about this? Uh, you're talking about some kind of, uh, landscaping around both sides yeah so the landscaping i just want to you know i want to keep the landscaping pretty simple i want it to be you know um like an elevated um an elevated uh garden bed um that's going to have you know really nice flowers and it's going they're going to hang over some greenery in there um a lot of it will probably be fresh herbs that we can use for our beverage program and also um a lot of herbs that kind of keep bugs away um, you know, really tastefully done, um, inside the tent will be the same type of, um, kind of palm tree, uh, type greenery that we used last year. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else from the commission have any questions before I open it to the public? Uh, with that, I will uh, open it up to members of the public. Rob O'Connor has his hand raised. Uh, just please give your name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, Rob O'Connor, 180 Main Street. And I uh, just wanted to start off by uh, concurring with Bryce that I'm, I'm right across the street. I see his place out of my windows. Um, and he has done a good job. I think he's done everything he can do with the Center Street neighbors. Um, sometimes I'm jealous that they got so much attention because I too live across the street from a restaurant slash bar. And I would posit that the, the, the parking problems in front of that, the building that's next to the firehouse are 10 times worse than, and, and more unsafe than the Center Street situation. And, it's, and it goes into two hours, two, two o'clock in the morning. So if people on Center Street 
I'm talking about the old town area and that business has 2 a.m. people, U-turns, door slamming, uh, patching out of the driveway, beeping their horn as a tradition. And I mean, I think if, if that place was held to the standards price was where you actually put up signs on the street and encourage parking into the Keeney Center. I mean, I was super impressed by that. And I feel like he's, he's a responsible neighbor. And um, I trust what he's doing there because it's like he's, he does it with action. Um, and then I just wanted to say that the, I, I think because I'm, I'm so living in the middle of that thing, the parking, the parking lot behind the fire department is a scary proposition for us. The Keeney Center does get used. Like I, I know that people don't, who don't see it every day say nobody goes there. Nobody, tons of people park there and walk. I mean, I mean, I can hear that place from my backyard too. That place is, that place is used and I think is much better solution than the fire department parking lot because 125 more cars parking behind that place fighting the fire trucks, I think is really going to be, I, I don't think, unless you live there, you don't really understand how many near misses those fire trucks, they, they can tell you, have with people driving on Main Street and to put a hundred cars behind those trucks trying to get in and out of the same spot, I just don't see how that's going to work, but I know it's a, and I really don't think it's, it's not, the parking is not, everyone says the parking is horrible. The parking is not that bad. Some of it's the enforcement of the parking and some of it's just, some days there's nobody here. I mean, some days we pull in here and there's nobody here. So it's like to spend money to have a parking lot with nobody in it is not the smartest thing for me. Um, but that, that Keeney Center parking lot for me, I would sacrifice the basketball court, which get some use, but not a lot to get maybe, I don't know, another 30 spots. That's probably what the capacity of old Wethersfield is right now. It's, it's, I mean, Bryce, you can, you can speak to it. You, you, if you had 125 people parked there and walked to your restaurant, you couldn't handle them probably if you had your regular crowd there. So it's like, it's, it's, I know you want to have a capacity, but it's like to have too much capacity. And I know that everybody's talking about the abutters, but I would love when they do look at that parking lot to look at the look at the across the street neighbors who are going to have those cars. My neighbors on both sides of me, you know, there's five people that live in the in the Robin sisters' house, all with that mess in and out of our lives every day. And it's like you know, we are we're not just like restaurant patrons; we're the taxpayers paying for that parking lot. And I really wish that you know, I'm hoping that the town comes to us and says, "Hey, what do you think about?" a cut through between the firehouse and the old town, a sidewalk that comes right at my house. I'm like, I don't want that. I mean, that, that the parking is the parking is one thing, but but the Keeney Center, they park and Bryce's employees have been like, we've watched them since you moved in. And Bryce actually, Bryce did come to us as neighbors and say, do you see my employees like not behaving and not being quiet and you come and tell me and they all park they walk across the, that new crosswalk and they walk down to their to their work or, or they take the bus. And it's like, I think that's exemplary. So I just wanted to say that. And thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is John's iPad. Yes, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, um, I did submit uh, written comments and. Maybe for the benefit of this group, I'll just I'll, I'll read them to you if you'll indulge me. But um, my name is my name is John Curran. I'm the owner and resident at 34 Center Street. I've actually lived at 34 Center Street for 34 years, and I've been a Weathersfield resident for 44 years. So until 2020, Center Street was a quiet residential street with very modest vehicular traffic. Today, the situation is vastly different. It begins in the morning with delivery and trash trucks, sometimes at a high rate of speed, going down Center Street. From noon to 11 p.m., at least six days a week, I have four to five cars parked in front of my house, frequently parking extremely close to my driveway entrance and usually blocking my center walk to the street. Given that my house is reasonably close to the street, we have lost all sense of privacy and in the evenings need to close our window blinds. Uh, other consequences include noise, 
littering, loitering, and unfortunately, occasional public urination. In addition, friends and family visiting often cannot park in front of my own house and delivery trucks like UPS and FedEx have a difficult time maneuvering. There are frequently cars on both sides of Center Street creating, my, in my view, a public safety issue. There are nights where a fire truck would have a difficult time getting down the street. In my first 32 years at Center Street, the only time I can recall cars parked in front of my house would be the evening of the holidays on main event. And in that case, the town posts no parking signs on the south side, presumably for public safety. So how did we get here? Unfortunately, at the commission hearing on March 5th, 2019, the proverbial can was kicked down the road when approval was granted without any conditions for the limited parking. Would it surprise you that in the six pages of minutes from that meeting, the word park or parking is mentioned 56 times? It was clearly a concern then and absolutely nothing was done. In those same minutes, it's indicated that the 132 person restaurant would require 53 parking spots, but only had 14. <clears throat> My understanding is that the regulations require su sufficient parking on the same lot. When asked why at that meeting, a town official responded, so as to not burden a residential neighborhood with business parking. The regulations further provide that in unique circumstances, another lot within 250 feet may be considered. The fire station and the Kikini Center are neither within 250 feet. At that meeting, representative architects said, Center Street was not including in the parking availability as there's a no parking zone on the north side of Center Street. That's not true. Tonight's application is to add 50 seats to the 132 existing today. And that's a 30% increase. It also reduced the on-site parking from 14 to 12, two of which are handicapped parking. If you assume the original 53 required spots is correct, I personally think it's too low. The addition of 50 seats would increase the required spots from 53 to 73. The center street parking fiasco needs to be addressed before any additional seating is approved. If not, the situation will only get worse and it risks the possibility of accidents or injury in addition to the significant invasion of my personal privacy. I understand and appreciate the town is evaluating broader issues of parking. However, given the limited parking on site, once a car turns onto Center Street from Maine and the 12 spots are taken, they continue and park in front of the homes on Center Street. There are a few and perhaps more possible solutions. I think someone might have referred to that. Number one, require the restaurant to provide free valet parking with the valet stand at the entrance to the parking lot. Two, change Center Street from Woodland to Main to one-way traffic east, not allowing cars to enter Main Street. This would also solve the issue of truck, truck traffic. This was a neighbor's suggestion, but one I would support. And third, place no parking signs on Center Street. Until the current situation is adequately addressed, I cannot support this application. The commission now has a second bite at the apple, and I hope you take appropriate steps to restore our privacy and enhance public safety. Thanks very much. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else from the public that wishes to comment on this application? Yes, I would like to. Can you hear me? Okay, yes. This is Norm Cavoli from 14 Center Street, the house right adjacent to the uh, Charles restaurant. Uh, I wanna go back over some of the things I heard tonight and what my neighbor just commented and go over the same facts, maybe a little different adjectives. The town did approve this restaurant a couple of years ago and parking was I think 53 spots. It did not include Center Street. Someone from the commission mentioned you know, we all realize they're going to park on Center Street and we'll handle it later. And that is true. 
for in the two years that Mr. Hardy has run the restaurant, he did everything he possibly could to have a successful restaurant and keep in mind, he was an asset to the neighborhood. All the inside the restaurant was all COVID protected. The outside, all of his decorations were high class, top of the, you know, top of the line, and they looked good. He even had Kevin the turkey out there. Uh, the big concern is parking. I've heard it three or four times. There's a problem on Center Street. Neighbors are all upset. I'm a neighbor, the closest neighbor. Uh, my neighbor down the street at 34, he says there's four or five cars parked in front of his house very often. They always park in front of my house first. I don't mind that. I don't think there's a problem on Center Street. They usually park on one side, leaving enough traffic to go by on inclement weather. I look outside behind the firehouse is not full. Keeney is not usually full. They park on Center Street and sometimes on both sides. Cars park in front of the no parking signs, the legal no parking signs on Main Street, no parking here the corner. I see a, park, a car park there. On Center Street one Saturday night, uh, I don't, with the snow on the ground, cars were parked on both sides, big cars. Someone called the police, they came out and they, I think they probably moved some vehicles to make sure fire trucks could get through. Those illegally parked cars got tickets. I see the police come from that, okay? Uh, Bryce has done everything he possibly could, recommending people park in the public lots, online, on his restaurant website. He actually put up no parking signs on the street. They didn't work 100%. Cars would pull up, leave, somebody else would pull up on a rainy day, they weren't official town signs, they parked there, okay. Uh, the tent was in a parking lot last year, plus he had people on the grass. The parking on Center Street was full, no question about it, but isn't that what streets are for? Cars park on the street. Most of them do not urinate. Once in a while there's rubbish out in front of my house, I pick it up, okay? Uh, most people are very courteous well-dressed, driving beautiful cars, including the Rolls Royce one day. I don't find a problem with that. Uh, the, uh, the, the parking behind the firehouse, I think Rob mentioned the fire department might not like that, but the one, the plan I saw, the fire department parking will be separate from the public parking. You can't go from one lot to the other. I have concerns about it because it abuts my property. I will say the initial plan that Derek mentioned that will be changed is very uh, tasteful to my property. It's the best I, I expect. It was very good. I'm gonna ask for a little bit more grass area, but the first plan really considered my property and other homeowners around. Okay. Uh, back to Bryce, he wants the tent in that area. I don't think you know anybody likes a tent on the corner of a busy street. It'll be the best looking tent there is. If that's what he needs to be successful, I recommend you, you do approve it. If you don't, I don't. I think an, a tent is a lot less is, is better than an empty, a vacant restaurant building. I think what Peter mentioned, I would like to pursue. Would the would the commission allow Bryce to leave the tent? In the parking lot and leave it didn't look that bad last year it was tucked away in a corner the service bar was somewhat covered the grass area was very nice you had some flowers out there some lounge chairs some umbrellas that i would think would look better than a tent over the grass with the parking lot if that is acceptable to mr hardy and the town you guys i would recommend that uh, if that is not, I would suggest for one more year, I certainly can put up a tent on Main Street. I could certainly put up a, a tent in the parking lot, 10 or 12 more cars that will park on Center Street, to me is not the end of the world. It happens during lunchtime once in a while, usually on lunchtime in front of my house and maybe two or three down. 
almost to John's house at 34. Saturday evenings, yes, very crowded. Friday night, Thursday. I would say 90% of those lunch and supper times is cars in my, front of my house. As you go further down, the percent goes way down. At the end of Center Street, maybe 10, 20%, and it builds back up to 90%. Cars are parked in, my, in front of my house. I look behind me, and there's vacant spots in the firehouse lot. So, so you're not going to ever solve that. Uh, this new parking plan, I think Barney was right, will not be available this year. So I would like to see the Charles Restaurant have a tent where it's mutually agreeable in the parking lot and forget those extra 10 spots for one more year or at the corner. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. There are anybody else from the public that wishes to speak about this application? Um, we did receive, in addition to Mr. Curran's letter, we did receive two other uh, emails, one from Christine Kelly Lasella, 37 Belmont Street, um, concerning about having the large tent up for the spring, summer, and fall, making it look like a wedding, a fundraiser, or a craft fair is going on, um, and commenting on uh, the amount of parking that uh, is required and requesting outdoor bar service area would have people walking around with alcoholic beverages. The other one is from Larry Powers, uh, 126 Main Street, discussing the parking situation, uh, both in the area generally and on Main Street. Um, talking about the business use and maintaining the quality of residential life in the area, uh, indicating that the operation of the Charles has already had neg negative impacts on the quality of residential life, uh, concluding that this is the historic district, not the Silas Dean or the Berlin Turnpike. Um, too much traffic, not enough parking, and uh, that the town should have protected the historic district time for the town to quit granting exceptions to businesses that do not have enough parking <coughs> and to stop recruiting businesses that undermine the purpose of the historic district. Um, this last opportunity, is there anybody in the public that wishes to comment on this application? Speaker, Madam Vice President, our first lady and second gentleman. Members of Congress and the Cabinet, Justice of the Supreme Court, my fellow Americans. All right. Um, if not, um, the, uh, does the applicant have any, any response or reaction to any of the public comments? Uh, sure. Um, Rob, thank you for your positive comments. Uh, John, I know that we've talked extensively about your concerns. Uh, they don't go, fall on deaf ears. Um, I think you know that I've done everything that I can for your family and for uh, the neighborhood and Center Street. Um, Valley is not an option. Um, there's nowhere to put cars. So um, even if I was to financially be able to afford a valet service, which I could show you a receipt that is unattainable, um, you know, there's nowhere to put them. I mean, we could drive them to uh, Ocean State, I, I guess, but, um, you know, that wouldn't work, I don't think. Um, if you have concerns about your trucks, you have my email, you have um, my phone number. You know, we've been uh, in communication a lot. I've, you know, I've never had an issue from you with that. Um, and matter of fact, most of these delivery trucks have GPS devices when I do call. Um, and I have for other neighbors on your street, either they tell me it's not them or, um, you know, we'll, we'll be, we'll address it. So, um, those are things that I have done for other neighbors that, uh, you know, if you want to let me know when that happens, uh, you know, I think that will minimize that. Um, Norm, uh, of course, thank you for your positive comments. Uh, Christine Lasella, 
Um, you know, I don't think you could, I don't, I think we've done everything we can to um, make sure that the community uh, has a pleasant building, a pleasant um, environment to look at when you drive by Center Street and Main Street. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think we do a really, really good job at that. Uh, Larry, I understand your uh, concerns about Main Street um, parking. We, we all know about, um, you know, a business district is going to have to have lights. There's lights in front of my building that are manned by the town. Um, I, I can't address quality of life. And um, I think our business is exactly what the, um, the uh, town, when they had the, uh, well, we won't, we won't address that. Um, and that's it. I uh, appreciate everyone who is on the call. I appreciate the commission considering this application and um, thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Um, before you go, um, any other questions, comments from members of the commission uh, for the applicant? That's why the native alliance was created. It's here peace and stability in Europe after World War II. There's somebody yelling in the background. Over 29 other nations. It matters. Sounds like it's the president's speech. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, if there's nothing else, does somebody want to make a motion to close the public here? I'll move to close the public meeting. This is Pete. And George. Okay. Motion by Peter, second by George to close the public hearing. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, I can't remember whose turn it is to be seated, so I guess I will um, abstain and <laughs> allow everybody else to vote on this one, um, you know, just so that uh, everybody else gets a chance to participate on this. Uh, does somebody want to make a motion for purposes of starting the discussion? It's Paul Thompson. I'll make a motion to start the discussion. Um, make a motion to, I'm not sure I'm saying it right because I'm new. Make a motion to grant and the extension or permission to use a tent subject to stipulations imposed by the Property and Zoning Committee. I need help with the wording. Second, George. So it would be a motion to approve the application seeking a special permit um, for a temporary patio under a tent with a service bar at 161 Main Street. Perfectly said, that's what I meant. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um, all right, motion by Paul, second by George. Um, before you get to the stipulations, just bear in mind that the request, the application specifically was just for uh, 2022. Um, and it was, you know, I assume it would be as submitted. Yeah, I don't see a reason to, to shorten it from December 31st, if anybody else does. Makes sense to me, George. Um, are there any conditions, Mr. Chairman, that uh, uh, did Denise leave us with any, but uh, or somebody? No. I checked with no. uh, other staff members, and there weren't any. Yeah, I, Richard, I'd like to just propose uh, just an, an alternate thought uh, along the same lines. I, I really do believe that it's kind of a waste of energy, time, and money to uh, build this thing for a short period, then rip it up and do something totally different. Uh, you know, one thing that uh, uh, I worry about, I'll be very honest, is, uh, you know, creep. I mean, if, if, if 
there's a plan here to put something in good taste that HDC has approved and does not require long-term a tent to be placed in the corner of uh, Center Street and Main. That, that sounds okay to me, but as we heard the applicant tonight, he, just, he, he doesn't want to talk about that. He just wants to, us to review this. So I'm okay with a temporary solutions, but personally, I'm not okay with disrupting that corner for a short period of time. Uh, because I understand soon thereafter, there's going to be a permanent solution that is much better than a tent placed on gravel with basically cheap carpet. Uh, it, it just doesn't feel right to me. And it's also extra money for the applicant. It doesn't make any sense. So I would prefer if we allow this to happen as it happened last year, just Keep it where, where you had it before. Uh, 12 spaces or 14 spaces that we would gain by moving this is, isn't going to really fundamentally change the picture of parking in, in that area at all. Uh, and when he comes back with a permanent solution, you know, we'll have to consider, you know, what we do with Center Street. I mean, some ideas were thrown out uh, uh, in, in this letter that was read. Maybe not all of them are practical, but some of them could be applied to mitigate. And plus, we'll have a better picture of what the town has in mind with uh, what they want to do uh, alongside or beside the, the firehouse. So the picture will, will look a lot better. and We could deliberate a lot better about the permanent solution. So I, I propose that we approve the request, but keep it in the same location that it has been in 2021, if, if the commission uh, would indulge me in that thought. Is that? Yeah, I guess. I'm I guess not sure what you it. said, Peter. Would you repeat it, yeah, George? Mean, keep it uh, in the parking. Me, keep it in the parking lot, just like he had it last year. Do, do, keep it in the parking lot. Okay, Ra That's rather than, you would rather not have it out front and, right. and do a do, test out there. Right. I mean, he's going to dig up the, the heck with the cost that he has. Well, I, I mean, I consider that it doesn't make sense. He's going to dig up the lawn. He's going to put a bunch uh -huh. of gravel down, uh, go through all the expense, and then he's going to undo the whole thing at the end of the year. Uh, yeah, so. probably. But, but that's, that's the way he expense. wants to do it. That's a business decision. Yeah, right. that's uh, yeah. that's his choice. Right. And I, and I think like I like the opportunity to see it to see it in action, and then when something comes around and we have questions about maybe the handicap access wasn't to our liking, maybe you know, ah, this was too many people, we want to reduce this a little bit. Like it, it gives everybody context for when he comes back and he wants to do something permanent. And don't forget, he's doing this proactively. Like, can't he just sort of get grandfathered in through the rest of the year, like doing what you're talking about, Peter? No, oh, because at the end of March. Through the end, through the end of March, but then uh, is the town he, telling he everybody that they're not allowed after? Right. I mean, he doesn't know what's going to happen after... 31st of March. So he needs right. a solution that, that he has the ability to leave a tent somewhere on the property so he can continue to do business outside. I'm just suggesting have him continue to do business outside as he was last year on the parking lot. But I thought, it's Paul, I thought he wanted the tent to be put up as a pilot for this more permanent installation. It's not just about having a tent and, and seating outside. It's it's very specific to his business plan for future expansion. Paul, well, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what he wants to do. Wait, I, I thought he said he's not gonna put up a tent long-term. He's gonna do something similar to just a patio, an outdoor no, patio. No tent, just a patio, yeah. He didn't describe. Maybe he's he didn't, yeah, proposing he didn't really a structure the for all we you know. Maybe he's proposing a building expansion for all we know. He didn't yeah, say. Right. I guess we could yeah, look it up on the HDC website. But I, I think one of the things that's important about what he's significant positive that he's proposing here is that he's cutting the overall amount of seats to fifty from something that was a hundred plus or a hundred and ten last season so i think that's a positive with this request you know I, I agree with you peter i think you can certainly debate from a looks aesthetic standpoint where it looks better but 
I think after the governor's order expires, he'd probably have to get even a further parking waiver from us if he was using spaces in the parking lot. I don't know if that is entering into his thinking or not either, but um, I don't know, it seems, seems to me we, I think we're kind of in a position where we have to deal with what he's proposed, um, I, I don't know. You're right, Joe. Yeah, I mean, that, Thank that you. Kind, of, kind of my point is that I, I think we're kind of treading on thin ice when we're approving something that hasn't been applied for. Um, you know, and, and something that may not, frankly, be feasible or legal if, you know, the, the current statutory provision expires March 31st and, and something different kicks in. Um, you know, and, and I, the other thing, I, I just not for nothing, I mean, we've used the words park and parking 50 times tonight, too. Um, you know, and, and there are 12 spaces that are going to be made available that weren't available last year as part of this proposal. Well, I'm not hard set against what he's proposed. Uh, my main issue is I think aesthetically it, it, the tent in the corner is going to be a detraction. And if he could keep it where it is now, uh, and you're right, we don't know. Uh, then why not? That's that. That was my point. Yeah, I mean, and I guess just to you know to chase that down the rabbit hole a little bit further. I mean, if the you know if the current state of the law is extended for another year as they're proposing to do, you know, he can keep it as it is through 2022 and just not do what this application is for, you know, unless he wants to. So. Oh, that's a good point. All right. Um, anything further? If not, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? And I am abstaining so that everybody else could vote. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, uh, other business, nothing listed. Uh, minutes of February 15th. I make a motion to approve the minutes of February 15th, 2022, George. I'll second. Yeah, the only, okay, motion by George, second by Peter. The only comment I had, and I guess I need to um, get back to Cindy on this, is that we can never have more than nine people voting. So I just need to be a little Good clearer point, about Mr. Chairman. Who. I was going to bring that up. It shows up through the whole minute, so, and it's yeah. long. And I, I'm glad to have you yeah. legally tell me that, because I thought that was the case. I can make that change. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I just need to be more diligent yeah, about making sure I identify who's who's seated and who's not seated when we have more than nine people here participating. That so, was uh, um, that was definitely on me since I started off the meeting in your role, and I I think I started the meeting off at a wrong at a bad precedent. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, no, and, and as I said, you know, that'll go on your permanent record. So I and I fully accept I fully accept that. Okay. <laughs> any uh, any other comments? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm gonna abstain. Okay, Joe's abstaining. Uh staff reports. Uh the only thing I was gonna yeah, the only thing I was going to mention, which Denise might have already told you, is the town council did vote for no retail of marijuana sales, um, but cultivating product transport, transport or manufacturing, they did say to move forward. So I'm sure Denise will start working with you on that um, in the very near future. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. uh, 
public comment. Anybody from the public wanting to comment on anything else that um, was discussed this evening or not discussed? All right. Correspondence, there were a couple letters from Craig referring things from other towns. I guess one, one last thing before we go, we brought it up, you know, every couple of months along the way. Um, you know, I, I think the, the town council is going back to in-person meetings starting next week. Um, some of the other boards and commissions might be doing so as well. Um, I'm pretty sure we've already advertised our March 15th hearing as being Zoom so that, uh, you know, possibly starting with the first meeting in April, we could, could come back in person if there's an appetite for that. And uh, just wanted to see what people thought. I strongly favor it, Mr. Chairman, George. Okay. I'll, I'll say the same. If we can do it the following meeting, that'd be great. Okay. Thompson, I'm okay with it. All right. So yeah, there'll, I mean, be, no, I, there'll I, be no I, virtual for the public then. It'll all be live, correct? Should be. Yeah, I, I think yeah. given the given the technology in town hall, having having a hybrid meeting is probably not feasible. Um, yeah, was it, I think that was in the budget that. they were proposing. Yes, yeah. correct. <laughs> yeah, the, the only caveat is that, um, you know, under the existing law, members of the commission who, uh, for whatever reason, uh, have to call in are, are allowed to do so. But, um, you know, it, it just doesn't, doesn't work well with um, the technology that we have available to have, you know, either applicants or members of the public half calling in and half in person. Bonnie, how soon can you get that fixed in the town hall? I know you got it in the stuff we just talked about, but. Oh, when... I don't, geez, I don't know, George, because we would still have to, do a, well, we have had an engineer come out and take a preliminary look and give us pricing. So I suppose it might still take six or seven months, you know, because the other thing is you got to work around meetings going on. You know what I'm saying? Unless oh, we yeah. can relocate yeah. everything or everybody goes back to Zoom for a while. So I don't know, but it sure could use it. Right. Yeah, I got to so I guess, yeah. So I guess barring barring something changing drastically, we we can aim for having our first meeting in April be back in person. Let's try it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yeah, I think we've kind of all forgotten what what each other look like. So. Is there anything else uh, anybody wants to, to discuss before we adjourn? I want to echo Peter's earlier comments about the, the nice article about uh, George and Weathersfield life. Yes, and I'd like to thank both Bonnie and, uh, and my town, uh, my chairman and my commission for helping with that article. And uh, and I'm pleased uh, how well it came out. Yeah, they took out a lot of the stuff that we said about you. <laughs> <laughs> All the negative stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was too nice. She wouldn't follow your advice on that one. It, it was a lot of fun doing it. All right. Anything else? Not. Um, happy Mardi Gras. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Happy Mardi Gras, everybody. Peter All right, second. motion by Ryan, second by George. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, have a good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night.